So, what is risk? As we've mentioned already, Carnegie Mellon came up with this in the 70s and they said the risk is a combination of the likelihood, how often is it going to happen, and a measure of the, the magnitude of the consequence, how bad is it going to be when it does. And when we talk about looking at risk, we're always looking at uh, three risk receptors. The primary one, of course, is people, personnel risk. And this can be the risk to our people in the plant, but also if there are people in the surrounding area. So if the plant is in a, in a fairly populated area, then of course, depending on what the plant is manufacturing, if it's a highly toxic potential chemical, then you know, we could end up with um, uh, a lot of people outside of the plant that are affected. The second thing is environmental. We look at environmental and then the third thing is financial. And financial can be broken down into different types of financial risk. There can be a business aspect to it because we could have loss of business if we have major equipment damage uh, and we have to it takes several months to get everything back up and running. Then we could lose customers because they need to get their products or they'll go to your competitors. And there could be loss of the company's reputation as well, which can lead to, of course, um, a drop in the share price for the investors and then loss of market share. So all of these things can have a very detrimental effect. And of course, you can argue that everything comes down to financial at the end of the day, because even if, if there are fatalities, there'll be lawsuits, there'll be settlements, etc., fines. It's interesting, you know, I, I, I don't know if you saw the blog that I, I did on the 10th anniversary of uh, Deepwater Horizon. Now, believe it or not, it's 10 years since that happened. And there was a, um, a publication in, in the Marine magazine where BP's latest assessment is that this accident, this one accident, has cost them $65 billion. I mean, you can't imagine $65 billion in one accident. And, and it's not over yet. You know, and BP, the loss of BP's reputation was huge at the time. Uh, of course, the environmental, not just the fatalities, but the environmental was, was a, a massive. There were fines. Uh, there was all sorts of things that were going on because BP executives misled the US government by understating how much oil was actually being released into the Gulf. So it's, it's incredible. And we still have accidents today. Why do companies manage risk? Or why <laughs> they should be managing risk, of course, is because they have not just a, a, a moral obligation, so they should make the plant as safe as possible for its workers. Their standard of care should be as high as possible, irregardless of cost. There'll be a legal requirement because they may have to meet certain um, legislation. They might have to meet certain standards. And of course, there's um, the, uh, the level of risk and who's exposed to that risk. Then there's, of course, the financial. And, and again, it's interesting when I talk to management teams, I very quickly get a sense of the culture of the business. If the culture is very much financially driven, where they're just focusing on the bottom line, then implementing functional safety, implementing the safety life cycle is going to be a major challenge for the people who are responsible at the bottom of the chain. Because every time they want to implement changes or if they have to, when it's coming up to the equipment has to be replaced or refurbished, and the management say, well, has it failed? And of course the answer is no, it hasn't. Then why do I need to replace it? And I've had discussions with many companies, sadly, where this is the mentality. It's, you know, why do I need to do this? I've never had a problem before. You're telling me that I need to spend all this money and what am I gonna get for it? And this is the problem. You can't say to people, look, you've been lucky. If you don't follow this properly, you're exposing yourself to much higher risk and the likelihood of having a major accident is increasing daily. And it only takes one accident 
you know, dear old Trevor, Trevor Kletz, who used to be the ICI guru for safety and then ended up being a professor at uh, Texas A&M. Sadly, he's no longer with us. He always said, if you think safety is expensive, try an accident. Because an accident can put you out of business.